Hello and welcome. In today's video, we're going to be setting up a dashboard, and that's going to make it a little easier to access all of the different services we're going to be setting up. We're not going to have to keep typing in the IP address and trying to remember what port the service was running on. We'll be able to just click on the service, much like you can see here. This dashboard is called Homer Dashboard. This is the one that I currently use. I have made a video on this in the past. I'm going to link it in the description down below. But today's video, we're going to be using a different dashboard. It's called Dashy Dashboard. You can see here is the GitHub page for it. So we're going to be following along with this documentation to get Dashy set up. Before we do that, I just want to show you this resource right here. It's called the Awesome Self-Hosted List. And this is going to be an extremely valuable resource that I'm going to be referencing in almost every video going forward because what I show you might not be the best fit for you. You may have different preferences and this is going to give you a whole host of other options. Let's scroll down here. You can see all the different categories. It's neatly organized. I'm just going to search for dashboard. You can see personal dashboards here. Take a look at how many different personal dashboards there are for us as self hosters. There is a whole bunch of them. Like I said, we're going to be setting up Dashy here. However, the one that I'm running is Homer, which is this one, not to be confused with this one, which is also called Homer with an ARR on the end. All right, well, let's get started. Head back to Dashy documentation here and let's scroll down. There are some things through here that I want to show you. One of those things is the showcase here, which I think is really cool. And in here, you're going to find a bunch of different screenshots of how you can set Dashy up and how you can make it look and behave. If you're looking for ideas or some inspiration on how to configure Dashy for yourself, take a look through here. I'm just going to scroll through here just to let you take a look at how some people have set this up. You can see there's a lot of different graphs and widgets that you can add into Dashy. You can really customize it. All right, well, let's start setting it up ourselves. So we have the getting started here. And this gives us two ways of spinning up the Docker container. We can either use a Docker run command right here, or we can use a Docker compose file. Let's open up this Docker Compose. This is the route we're going to go. We'll copy this, and then we'll SSH into our server. And remember, we set up a symlink to bind mount all of the data for our Docker containers on our data drive, so that when Borg runs its backup, all of our containers are going to be backed up. And we put that in shared Docker. One thing I just noticed here, when I'm trying to do tab completion on the symlink, it's not putting the forward slash on the end. I have to press it twice. When I go, I just want to point this out. This is a Linux thing, and we're going to be fixing this in the next video with our bash RC file. But when I press shared and press tab, you can see it puts that forward slash on the end. And then when I do docker and press tab, it doesn't unless I press tab again. That's kind of annoying. I don't like that. We're going to fix that in a bash RC file. That's just going to be a quick video that I'm going to put out right after this one. So be on the lookout for that. I put a link on my website in case you don't care to watch the video. Go to someday and you'll be able to find my bash RC example file here. And this is just some nice shortcuts in a bash RC file that I like to use to make navigating around a little more efficient. The one that's going to help with appending that forward slash on a symlink directory is this one right here. But we'll get back to setting this up. We've got Docker. We're in the Docker folder and we're going to make a directory for Dashy. CD into it. Remember Alt tab will just instantly put in your last argument that you had on the previous command. And then we're going to use micro to create and edit our compose file here. We'll paste it in. And let's take a look and see if we need to change anything here. We have our image. We have the container name. We're going to change that to a lowercase. Here we can set some volumes. So let's uncomment this. 
and uncomment this. This is going to give us access to the config file. I like my files to be named the same as they are in the container though, so I'm going to change that. It doesn't matter. It's just a personal preference. And then if we're going to download icons manually, there is one other location we have to bind mount. I need to refer back to the documentation for that. Let's search for icons and go to the icons side of the documentation, local icons. And here it gives us the bind mount for local icons. We'll copy that and add another bind mount here. And we'll change the location to icons. This will change as well, like that. Port 4000 looks fine. Environment variable is good. This UID and GID we want to change. We'll uncomment those. Our GID is 100. That's going to vary depending on what your operating system is. Just run ID and it'll tell you. Let me get back to the terminal here. If we do ID, you can see we're user Tony, ID of 1000, group ID of 100 users. Now, if we wanted to run this as the Docker user, we could remember very early on as I walked through Open Media Vault, I did show myself setting up a Docker user to be running all these Docker containers, but it's generally easier to run them as the user that you're gonna be logging into the server with SSH as, just because it makes it easier to edit the files. You already have the permissions set up to access those files. And restart policy unless stopped. We can set this network mode to bridge as well. And that should be good. Let's control S, control Q. We'll spin this up. sudo docker compose up dash D. And now let's take a look what we have in our directories. We have that conf.yaml file and an icons folder. Let's see if there's anything in that YAML file. Here's a problem that can happen with bind mounting files instead of directories. If the file doesn't exist before the container spins up, it's going to create that bind mount as a folder instead of linking it as a file. So we're going to have to fix that. We're going to take the container down. We're going to remove that folder because this is actually a folder here. We're going to touch and touch is just going to create the file for us. Now the file is in here and it's actually a file instead of a folder. Now we can spin the container back up. And now if we look at that file, it's a file, but it's empty. And start taking a look at Dashy next. Type in the IP address. And that's running on port 4000. We'll go over a lot of this. We're not gonna go over everything. We're just gonna go over some of the basics to get things set up. Because Dashy is actually really complex and highly, highly configurable, and we could spend all day going over every single little option, but we just want a good starting point to be able to access our services here. The first thing we're going to click on is enter the interactive mode. And you can see here we're in the interactive mode, and down here are our config saving options. We have a few different ones. So save locally is only going to save it to your browser. It's not going to save it to the server. So if you go on to another computer, the config is going to be different. Save to disk will save it to the server. So that's going to save it in this conf.yaml file. So that's generally what we're going to want to do unless we want to have an alternative config on a different machine locally to that machine. We can use this one. We can also export config and cancel edit. But let's start by editing page info. Let's go with self-hosting series. And then we'll save to disk. Now let's refresh the page and we can see that populated up there. And now if we cat our config file, we can see page info title self-hosting series. Let's go back into our interactive editor and take a look at some of the other options that we have here. We can add navigation links. We'll put one in here for DuckDuckGo. You can set 
how it opens in a new tab, same tab, parent. I usually like setting things same tab. If I wanted to open a new tab, I'll hold down control. But you can see that put a link up here for DuckDuckGo. And you can put a bunch of links going all the way across there. Save to disk. Go back into interactive editor. What else do we have in here? We can put footer text. We'll just type in test footer, our app logo. You can see that put test footer down there. Now edit app config. Here you can see we have a lot of options for changing how this works by default. One of the things I would change is setting this to same tab. There's status checks in here. I'm not sure how that works. If it just pings it from the container, I'd have to check the documentation on that, but this does have status checks for all these services built into it. If you so desire, there is a status check interval, default theme, background, your fav icon API. We'll be talking a little more about the icons in a little bit, but I mean, there, I'm going to scroll down. There's too much to go over in one video. Like I said, it's highly, highly configurable. We're going to save that, save to disk, and go back into it. Again, where we're going to add our new section, and we're going to call this admin. Let's click save. So it is not working. If you run into this problem, you're not doing anything wrong. But if I go like that, click cancel edit, try to add the section again. Now it works. For whatever reason, it doesn't work the first time. But we have this section here now called admin. We will put items in there for all of our different services. The first one we can put in there is our Open Media Vault interface. So we'll type in Open Media Vault. And that's running on the IP address of the server here. We don't have to put a port because port 80 is the default. And if we click save, you can see Open Media Vault is in there. And if I click it open, we have very easy access to get to our Open Media Vault interface. However, we want to have a nice icon in here. Now, the great thing about Dashi that I like, which sets it apart for me over Homer, is it gives us this really slick way to get icons from the home lab icons now there are a lot of other ways that it can download icons and use different apis for different services but since we're in a self-hosting environment and this home lab icons page is going to have almost all the icons we need this is a very cool way to get icons we'll click on this and now you can read through this if you want i'm just going to quickly show you how it works basically you're going to want to go into the PNG folder, and then just control F, search to see if your service that you're trying to set up exists in here. So we'll search for Open Media Vault. You can see there is an icon listed in here for that. That means it's going to work. And if we want to use these home lab icons, you type in HL and then the file name that exists here without the extension. So we'll type in HL open media vault and hit save and now you can see it has the open media vault icon let's set up the rest of these services so i got portainer open here so we can see what other services we have running and what port they're running on the next one we'll set up is portainer add new item portainer hl portainer and the earl this needs HTTPS and it's running on 9443. We'll save that and we'll do the rest of these. We can do health checks next. It's running on port 750. And we'll do Dazzle.
Now, let's say you're running a less popular service and the icon doesn't exist in this GitHub page where Dashi is pulling the, the icons from. Then you can download the icon manually. So let's just find an icon, just some random icon here. We'll use this question mark. We'll copy the link, and then we're going to CD into our icons folder and use wget to download it. And it didn't let us. All right, this folder is owned by root, so it's not going to let our user to change anything within it. We're going to take ownership of this folder. Now we'll CD back into it and we'll try to download this file again. And now it let us download it, but we're gonna change the file name so it's easier. There we go. Now back in Dashi, we'll just do a test. And we should just have to give it question.png if I remember the documentation. Yes, and now you can see we have that icon in there. All right, now let's remove this one. Go back to the editor. Can we remove it from here? Doesn't. Look like we have an easy way to remove this. Let's use our editor here, and then we should be able to remove it within this. Go to sections, there's four things in here. Remove. Save to disk, okay. But now you can see we have a very easy way to access all of our services. We no longer have to remember port numbers. We no longer have to type in IP addresses. We want to get to Portainer. We can just click on it. Boom. We're in Portainer, Health Checks, Dazzle, whatever we want to do. And as we add more and more services, we'll categorize them in different ways, much like I have done with Homer on my dashboard. But... Going forward, we'll keep adding things into here, and it's going to just make accessing these services very easy. The next thing we'll do is add a widget so you can see what that process looks like. We have health checks set up, and Dashi does have a cool health checks widget, so that's what we're going to do. Let's first open health checks because we're going to need to create an API key from within here. So if we go to settings and health checks, we're going to create a read-only API key. We'll copy this. And then on the GitHub page, I'm going to search for widgets. Get to the widgets documentation where it's going to give us a whole bunch of different widgets that we can install. But we're going to search for the health checks one. And this is going to tell us the options that we need to put in here. So we have that ready. We'll head back to Dashi and we'll create a new section called status. Save to disk, and this is where we're going to put the widgets. Let's edit the config. Scroll down to that new section we just created. You can see name status, and then we're going to create a widgets and put this information in here. We have type. options we need to give it the host and that's going to be the address of our server and the port that health checks is running on and then we need to give it that api key so if we're only using one i think we can do it like this get rid of these white spaces. Let's see if that works. 
There we go. And if we wanted to move this to be over there, which I would like to do, we'll move this up the chain here. Right there, Control S, refresh. And this is what our dashboard is beginning to look like. And like I said, there are a bunch of other widgets in here. Again, too many to go over in a video like this, but this is just to give you an idea of what you can set up. And last thing I wanna do before closing this video, we'll go ahead some of the different layouts and themes up here. We can see this has some built-in ones that are really cool. We have this material. I'll just go through these really quick. like the Nord Frost. And then right here, you can further configure any themes with different colors, fonts, changing different variables in the theme. Here are the different layouts. And then with each layout, you can change item size as well. And on the far right, switch view, you even have alternative views here. Workspace mode. It's a very cool dashboard. And the only other thing I'll point out is if you're looking for a service, say you got a ton of these in here, you don't know where to move your mouse to find it, you can just start typing any of these. So Dazzle, press tab. Hit control enter will open into a new tab otherwise just hit enter and it'll open it in the same tab since that's what we have to do by default and that's going to do it for this video we now have a dashboard set up where we can easily access all the different services that we have set up and that we are going to be setting up we can set this as our home page in our browser or just bookmark it so that we can easily get to it like i have up here we have a quick way now to get to any of the services that we set up. Thank you for watching. You all have a nice day.